instead of me claiming that i am speaking for uh, dalit women we need to reorient ourselves into thinking that i am speaking with them not for them but with them because for them automatically gives us this sense of supremacy so dr anandita pan you've uh, written uh, the book titled mapping dalit feminism towards an intersectional standpoint can you tell us a little uh, a little bit about the book and uh, your motivations behind writing it and of course the research and writing process this is uh, purely written from an academic perspective so this book tries to you know as the title says mapping dalit feminism it tries to map the entire discourse of dalit feminism in the past two decades or so and uh, i take the 1990s as the starting point Uh, not really limited to it but uh, as the starting point because the 1990s saw a huge uh, you know like uh, 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 growth in terms of dalit women's autonomous organizations across india dalit women's concerns started coming up in the global platform with the durban conference and uh, you know many other platforms as such so people started talking about it and the discourse call or the area called dalit feminism was also emerging in academic and scholarly writings so i take 1990s and uh, what i do is i map the discourse and by discourse i mean that i include literature of course uh, i also include movements films lots of visual media you know uh, different kinds of legal cases that are there so it's a kind of uh, the, uh, you know the mapping the whole area so to say and the way i take uh this kind of mapping or i do this kind of mapping is by placing the dalit feminism in contradistinction to mainstream indian feminism and dalit politics so it's a kind of uh you know tripartite sort of situation that i am looking at where dalit women situation so i look at dalit women as a category that is different from the category called indian women and dalit men so and that is where the idea of intersectionality comes in so what i am trying to argue is that when we talk about the women it's not just uh, you know caste or gender which is individually affecting them it's caste and gender they are coming together it's a interlocking system of oppression that is happening uh, the notion of intersectionality has uh, you know ruled uh, the book and uh, i have termed this intersectionality as intersectional standpoint because standpoint is really all about a position or a positionality where i consciously choose to see something uh, to uh, where i consciously choose to see caste and gender being intersectional so that's why i call it an intersectional standpoint the intersectional standpoint that uh, dalit women uh, you know are are located on is very different from the one that the indian woman is located on can you tell me a bit about the difference there are lots of pamphlets written in 19th century which say that uh, western uh, or indian women should learn uh, you know how to mingle with her husband's friends know a little bit about western education but she should only strive to become a better wife and a better mother and she should always uh, remain within the house so all sorts of you know brahmanical norms that were there are again reinforced so the times are changing but the patriarchal systems remain the same and this is how an indian woman was supposed to be now when we talk, talk about uh, this kind of uh, you know format and we generalize it for everybody and say that this is uh, who an indian an indian woman should be the problem is that we are homogenizing the category because if we you know to go back to 19th century along with the people uh, like rashmari devi who were writing about how women were supposed to be there were a whole lot of other categories of women uh, you know who were the working class women who were working outside so those categories of women were completely erased when you know somebody constructed this notion of indian woman so this category indian woman itself is a highly problematic one. because it keeps on erasing a whole lot of or ignoring a whole lot of other people who are engaged in different kinds of work who belong to different kinds of religions different castes 
so there is a structural erasure that keeps happening a lot more people need to be included in the conversation but how mm-hmm. far can non dalit people shape the conversation is the question that a lot of people are asking uh so the basic idea that who can speak for whom i am speaking for you okay so instead of that instead of me claiming that i am speaking for uh dalit women we need to you know th- this is going to be a very complex task but we need to reorient ourselves into thinking that i am speaking with them not for them but with them because for them automatically gives us this sense of supremacy whether it's in terms of knowledge power uh, class or caste all sorts of supremacist uh, you know uh, sort of hypocritical notions that we have baby kamle is one of the first people that comes to mind who has who is considered one of the first uh, noted dalit women writers and dalit women writers is obviously bama who has written uh, immensely and her writings are very very powerful where she also incorporates religion as well uh, the third person once again would be uh, gogu shamala she her writing among the contemporary authors i would say gogu shamala Uh, you know this is just to mention there are way too many just to mention the tip of the iceberg basically uh, has been a very influential sort of uh, writer i feel uh, and also we have uh, among the contemporaries the very recent ones we have kollani thakur chada from west bengal who has been writing very interesting uh, you know works uh, so this is all i'm going for creative writing or autobiographical narratives um we also have uh, you know lots of non fictional non creative writers and the two books that immediately uh, come to my mind one would be uh, urmila pawar and minakshi moons we also made history it's also another person that comes to mind would be meena kandasam who has been tremendously uh, you know powerful subscribe to our youtube channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any videos by us